Good morning. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. We are nearing the end of April. On this day in history, um, the World War II Monument or Memorial opened in Washington, D.C. in 2004. So World War II was a very, um, a very historically famous and uh, important war that happened um, in the 1930s and 40s. And they put together a monument, which is a place that you can go and visit in order to remember um, or learn about or honor those that fought in World War II. So it's in Washington, D.C., and it opened this day in history in 2004. Our word part of the day is another suffix, so it attaches to the end of a word, and it is ness, N-E-S-S. When you add ness to the end of the word, it makes it a state of being, which sounds kind of funky, but what it means is take the word happiness. When you add ness, it means the state of being happy, or when you are feeling happy. Happiness is being happy. Sadness is the state of being sad, or that place that you're in when you're feeling sad. So when you add ness, the state of being, happiness, sadness, greatness, it um, uh, can be added on to the end of a word in order to alter its meaning. So maybe think of more examples that have ness at the end of them. Our would you rather question of the day. Would you rather learn to talk all over again or learn to walk all over again? I would rather learn to talk all over again so that when I was learning to talk, um, I could also learn another language because it's actually easier for your brain to learn two languages at once. And it's actually easier to learn a language when you're younger. So the older you get, the harder it becomes for your brain to learn a new language. doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means that it takes longer. So when you're little, your brain is like a sponge and you can absorb lots and lots of information. So when you're little, it's easier to learn a second language. So I guess I would want to learn to talk all over again because I'd want to learn multiple languages at once. But what would you rather do? Would you rather learn to talk all over again or learn to walk all over again and support your claim with reasons and examples? Um, our, my mindful strategy that you can use, I'm calling it take five. I kind of made up with it. I kind of made it up and took what was already made and made it my own. So I'm calling it take five. And when you're feeling really frustrated or you're feeling sad, you take five and you, fi and you name five things. You hold up your fingers. You name five things that you love. So if I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling angry or um, I'm feeling one of those other feelings that's getting me down, I'm going to stop, take five, name five things that I love. I love my job. I love my dog. I love my family. I love sunsets, and I love mac and cheese. Those are five things that I love. So take five and name five things that you love right on your fingers. And if you have to do it a couple times a day just to ground yourself and remind yourself of the things that make you happy and the things that you love and the things that you have in your life, take five. Okay. Our wonder precept of the day. Oopsies. 25, 29. Okay. This is from Austin Cleon. Don't wait until you know who you are to get started. Don't wait until you know who you are to get started. Interpret that and think about what you think it means. I personally think it means that Instead of making an excuse to start things once you're sure, like, oh, maybe I will, um, so say um, someone is working a job and they say, oh, like, maybe I'll go back to school and learn how to do a different job, but I'll wait until I'm sure. So instead of waiting until you're sure, if that's what's going to make you happy, just start. Um, interpret it however you might, though. Don't wait until you know who you are to get started. And what other story cubes? While well, I'm taking my story cubes out, um, I finished another book last night, so I moved on to another one. I think it would be really cool if you could read more books than me. So I've read 17 books. How many books have you read this year? 
I'm trying to make myself read more and more because last year I reflected on my year last year and I realized that I didn't read as many books as I could have and should have. Reading is really important no matter how old you are. Um, so I decided to consciously decide to start reading more. All right. We have a plane and an alien, which actually, in recent news, the Pentagon, which is a... Um, when they refer to the Pentagon, they mean um, the government that works out of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is a building in uh, D.C. that is shaped, you guessed it, like a Pentagon, so it has five sides. Um, they recently released some footage that they uh, said are of uh, UFOs. So they're not claiming that there's aliens, but they're saying these are some unidentified um, foreign objects that were flying through the air. And I think some of the footage is from, like, 2005, and some of the footage is from the 90s, maybe. But check it out. Kind of interesting. So, are aliens real? I don't know. I think they are, but that's just my personal opinion. So, do a one-sentence story. Tell about an alien in an airplane, or an alien or an airplane. Or maybe research what's go what the, the footage that the Pentagon released. Um, or maybe research different types of airplanes, or write about them. So, talk about it, or write about it. And until next time, it's Miss G. See you soon.